mattress in the frat house. I just realized you can totally see my reflection in the table. <laughs> How are you all doing? Are you all enjoying One Book July this year? I am having so much fun with it this year. I am so glad we decided to do Bullet Journal. I'm so glad we decided to do a read-along of the book because I needed this second read-along and I needed Romani's videos on the Bullet Journal method for me to be able to fully grasp how fantastic it is. <laughs> So, before I say anything else, if you haven't watched any of Romani's bullet journal videos yet from this month, go check out her channel. She's at Romani's Realm. I will link everybody's stuff down below, um, Mimi's, Vicky's, Romani's, and mine, so you can go check everything out. Um, I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this. And in that vein, let me show you what I decided to use this year. I am probably more shocked than you guys are going to be. There it is. <laughs> Romani said, this was back in June, we were all talking about what we wanted to do for One Book July, and Romani made the comment that the expanded moleskines were on sale on Amazon. What can I say? <laughs> so I snapped one up because I think they were like $15 US dollars. So I, that's one thing that's always bugged me as much as I've always loved moleskines was I wanted more pages. And boom. I mean, could I ask for more pages than that? Come on. So what I have going on in here is bullet journal method as far as I understand it so far. And so I'm sure things are going to evolve and change. A couple of things I've already changed. I changed because I when I tried bullet journal method previously, they didn't work for me. So I thought, okay, I'm going to, for that section, like my monthlies, for example, I'm going to stick to what works with me. There are too many moving parts on our schedules here for me to mess with things too much. And that monthly layout is something I just need to stay the same. <laughs> so so here's what I have going on. And you know something else I have to say about this Moleskine Expanded? I'm loving this hardcover. I am normally not a fan of the hardcover, but oh, I'm loving this. Absolutely loving it. And yes, you can see I have tabs. I have tabs everywhere because that's what I do. And oh my gosh, off the top of my head, I can't remember where the tabs came from. Okay, I remember that the labels on the tabs which are really hard to see because the sun happens to be shining right down on me. Over here you can see them. Those are from Caden's Mom Shops. And I will link to where the tabs themselves came from because I am not remembering and I'm really, really sorry about that. But I will link to everything down below. So here's what I have going on in here. Um, I have a 2019 overview from SM Plans, which I really like because she has the week numbers on it. A um, little bit of decoration. This is all from um, actually scrapbook.com. And then this vinyl was a gift that Dexina sent me. Hello. And then this page is just the flyleaf page, so it's always kind of pointless. Um, so then I've got a picture of Mike over there. I've got some photo booth pictures of us from a road trip we took. And then my index starts. Now, just today, I... I, I just had these index pages blank. I had it labeled index and that was it. And I thought, okay, you know what? I watched Romani's video about to index or not to index. I did some thinking about how my brain works and how I can, you know, the most efficient way that I know I will find things. And I decided to separate things up by month. But then I also have one, two, three spreads still available. So if I want to do a column, these will be the columns for each month. And then, so let's say I have no notes in here yet. Okay. No video notes, no nothing in here yet. So let's say I do, you know, some video notes in July and I'll talk to you about how I'm going to do that. Plans is going to be just, you know, from page 11 to whatever are my monthlies, my weeklies, my dailies, that kind of thing. I haven't been setting that up in advance. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then anything else that's important that I put in there, I will just index below what pages those plans are on. So I'm going to put plans, leave some space for page numbers over here, and then continue. I'm only going to index the stuff that I feel is super important that I'm going to have to go back to. Okay, I'm not going to put like every page what was on that page into the index. I can go find that myself by looking at the pages. And then these, if I feel, let's say I have video notes um, stretched throughout the book and maybe I want to see them all together versus spread out per month, then I might make a column for that. I just, I left this many spreads because there are 400 pages in the book, if I remember correctly. I wanted to have enough index spreads that I could actually work with them. So that is why so many blank spreads there. And then 
comes my future log or forward planning. For me, it's forward planning just so I don't lose track of things because especially I'm only going kind of a week at a time in here. I have a July monthly set up, but then I've kind of settled into over the last week and a half um, going a week at a time. So I don't have an August monthly in here yet or a September monthly. So, and I don't have any place in here yet to put my August finances because they go after my monthly layout. Um, can calendar layout. So I just slapped a post-it note in there. This is a fold-out from Peanuts Planner Co. It's a personal size one. It's perfect because no matter what planner I'm in, I can tip this in. Personal size will fit into personal size, B6. Obviously, this isn't quite an A5, but it's close. Um, so this is just 2019. This is Mike's schedule, a little bit of my travel, and then uh, the hockey schedule for 2019-2020 was put out. Um, so I put that in here. So I had that was 2019 specific. Um, she doesn't have a 2020, like I said, it was Peanuts Planner Co. She doesn't have the 2020 dated yearly bundle available yet. So I printed this 2020 overview from SM Plans and just kind of did the same thing. I color code the home games and away games and then I put them back here. Uh, then, then it goes straight to my monthly. This is what the July monthly looks like right now. This feels so wonderful. There's so much space to work with here. I am so sorry for the funky lighting, you guys. I'm trying to see if I can, and I can't, I'm not tall enough to stand and block block this light right here. Um, pretty simple. What I am going to put, I believe, down in this section was I had started keeping track of like what I was watching in July, what I read in July. I kind of like to go back and look at those things. I keep track of the books that I've read in Goodreads, um, but like podcasts, audiobooks, you know, TV shows, like I just finished Stranger Things season three. Oh my gosh. So I like to put that stuff with the monthly somewhere um, and I was doing it on these in between pages monthly pages um, but I moved my to-do list for the month over here so I'm gonna put that stuff down here I think uh, the stickers on here are all planner Kate I believe these are the Hobonichi weeks monthly stickers if I remember correctly and they're the perfect size so um, and I cannot remember either. I am so sorry. I can't believe I can't remember where the monthly tabs came from either. Again, I will link it down below. And then after my monthly calendar, I have bills due over here. I did this log style. So these are the dates the bills are due, what date, how much is due. And then over here is kind of any sort of unplanned expenditures or like a dental bill uh, because Jack had a cavity. <laughs> um, you know, I bought some more of the, I bought some Planner Kate A5 monthly so I could do a little bit of decorating kind of over in here and whatnot. Um, also from Planner Kate, so I noted that. Anything like that um, I put over here. So any, you know, extra expenditures, um, big expenditures that we weren't planning on, medical bills, which I also have a spread for in the back. And then this side is my to-dos. So the left column is all to-dos that are not mine and then the right column will be to-dos that are like videos writing stuff stuff I want to look into um, you know anything that I would like to get done this month I just separate kind of my things from family or house things and then we go into the weekly so this was last week this was the first week um, and like I said, I didn't show you this right away because the first week of the read-along was kind of about the why and your motivation for keeping a bullet journal. So I didn't want to jump into how I had mine set up if people were still reading the why part before the book had even gotten to the setup or the process. So I thought we'd hang on to, oh look, the sun has moved a little bit and I can scoot us over a bit. I apologize, I hope I'm not making you motion sick, but look, there we go. Maybe the sun has moved, maybe there's a cloud. We'll see what happens. So this was how I set up the first week. I still need a weekly layout. I still need weeklies and dailies. I have in the past multiple times tried to use a monthly and then just dailies. And oh my goodness, my brain fights against it so hard. So I just didn't fight my brain on it. I, brain wins. <laughs> and so I have just the week laid out over here. So Monday through Sunday, tasks over here, meals down here and these aren't in any particular order so this is basically just a list of the suppers for the week 
and I keep it in my planner on the weekly usually just so that if I'm in the grocery store and I am stuck for what to make for a couple of suppers worth of you know things to grab I can flip back through my week layouts real quick regardless of what planner I'm in and see what I've made in the previous couple of weeks um, and then for the first week I tried really hard to just use up what space I needed for a day and then move on to the next day I tried really hard this hurts my head <laughs> this hurts my brain so much I do not like having multiple days on one page it drove me crazy I love the idea of saving the space I love the idea of the notebook will last longer that way there's something about not having a fresh page in the morning that makes me insane and I don't like it <laughs> so this week I I did just like, like look at Thursday I literally it was 4th of July we just kind of hung out all day we went to fireworks at night I literally did you know nothing that I needed this for at all so I'm gonna put some pictures over here because we had family stuff last weekend so I'm gonna put pictures and um, movie tickets over here but like that this drove me crazy that there were three days on this page so and, and I can see the point of oh my gosh but it was a holiday you only used one line if that had its own page what a waste like here Saturday and Sunday were supposed to go here I didn't touch it I was reading in the bullet journal method I was just highlighting at that point I wasn't taking any notes so this just didn't get touched except for to set up the upcoming week so if that happens I did go back to a day per page I just had to I have to have a clean page in the morning aside from appointments and whatnot that I've written in like the night before when I've done my evening reflection I have to have a clean page it makes my brain feel so much calmer so when this happens I will go back and use that empty page for notes for a video or for notes for something I'm reading I don't have to take those notes in the notes section which I'll show you in a second I don't really have a notes section per se I'll just go back and use one of these blank pages for that or I'll put some pictures in there I have movie tickets and pictures to put in here already I just haven't sat down and done it so then this week looks like this. I'm using up some of my Hobonichi Week stickers just for a little bit of pretty and just to save me from having to label things. <laughs> so I did the same weekly setup. There's a Monday through Sunday of this week. There's a little this week sticker, to-do sticker. Um, do I remember where these came from? I actually have these back here so I can tell you. These Hobonichi Week stickers came from Plan with Pizzazz. Again, I'll link everything down below. I apologize for the shops that I cannot remember right now. It has been a very long day. <laughs> so basically it looks a lot like the first week except I went to a page per day. Um, if you noticed in the first week also there were you know all these little lines of color. When I'm doing usually my evening reflection I don't carry all these highlighters with me. I carry a black pen with me and I carry a gray highlighter with me because that is what I'm highlighting in my bullet journal method book that we're reading along together. I'm using the gray highlighter in there. So that went in my pencil bag otherwise I just have a black pen but then when I'm doing then I don't have to carry everything Thing. but then when I'm doing my evening reflection I will go through the day and color code everything and decide what I'm doing with it um, so I also color code appointments over here so that I just remember who is what um, who needs to be where when that kind of thing and then this is my task list for the week again meals down here and then I went to a page per day now something I haven't done yet so there was Monday and there's Tuesday and yesterday Something I haven't done yet is I have no notes in here. I do have some collections, which we haven't talked about in the read-along yet, but those are in the back. Those have tabs on them. I'm sure there will be more. Um, I would really like to stick with this. I am so enjoying applying this method to my planning. It hasn't changed my system. My si I still have a system. My system flows from my month to my week to my day during review, which I am now kind of mentally calling reflection instead of review, and I'll talk about that later um, in a separate video, but how that shift in that word, just changing that word, how that shifted my thinking about my reviews, you know, the information from my reviews then gets filtered kind of upward again, so to speak, back into my weekly or my monthly or to a future to-do list, that kind of thing. So a lot of it is the same, but the mindset, I'm noticing my mindset changing. Hello, B. So, um, when I'm doing my evening reflection, that's when I'll go through. I don't color code this stuff during the day. 
I usually do it during my evening reflection. It's my way of knowing, okay, I saw that, I did it, or okay, I see that, I reflected on it, I see that it's been processed, or I see it, it hasn't been processed, but when I come back and process it, like this is notes for one of the upcoming videos. I haven't done anything with it yet, but pink is my stuff, so it's highlighted in pink. So I saw that in one of Romani's videos, she had put these little boxes at the bottom of her page, and all I did was draw in a box and split it. I have to turn this way, guys, because the way I have the camera angled. But I put a little box and split it in half. So to my mind, that box represents this spread, okay? And the top half of the box is this page, the bottom half of the box is this page. When I know I have done everything that I can do with the things that are on this page, so if it's, um, like Hunter has a doctor's appointment next week that I got the date for and the time for yesterday. So backwards facing arrow to show that it needs to be not migrated, but it needs to be scheduled in a, a future log, so to speak, which means I put it on the calendar, the monthly calendar for next week. There it is. Um, things like that. This, when I make, a, I need to make a spread in here for video notes. Um, so once that's been done, um, I took care of the hockey schedule yesterday. I have a book hold I have to go pick up at the library. Once I know I've done everything on here, I can fill in the bottom right hand corner of this little box and I know this page is done. There's nothing else on here for me to process, deal with, look at, it's done. So the top half would apply to this page over here. Okay, that's what those little boxes are for. Here, I've done everything that I can do with these two pages, so I filled the boxes in. So that's kind of a nice way for me to kind of give it a flip quickly and see if there are any open boxes. That means there's open processing to be done on one of these two pages. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I still haven't shaken the cold yet. So here's my conundrum. When I did bullet journal method before, one of the things that my brain really fought against was having things like notes or collections interspersed in my daily pages. It drove me crazy. It made me feel incredibly disorganized no matter how much I organized it. I had them notated on the side so I knew what was on that spread very quickly just by looking. Um, sometimes I'd put page flags there. If it had a page flag on it, it was still something I was working on. It was kind of an active project or an active collection. It still drove me crazy. So. After watching quite a few of Dexina's B6 Stalogy flips, I thought, you know, what if I put, what if I set up my weekly, since I know I'm doing a page per day now, so I have a weekly and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, what if I just set that up because I know I'm going to use a page per day, if for some crazy reason I need more space for a day than is on here, I'll just tip in an extra piece of paper, right? What if I put you know, say I need a spread for video notes. And that's another thing I needed to remember was like a collection or, you know, projects, video notes, ongoing projects. I need to treat them as a full spread. Romani talked about this in one of her videos too. If I just use this page for say video notes, okay? And then I were to use this page for say a house project, that would bug me to no end. I'm going to have video notes. I'm going to continue to have video notes. So why not make the whole spread video notes? And if the house project is something that's kind of really long and ongoing, I would go back here and make a spread for that. Does that make sense? Video notes are something that are more active currently. So I don't mind keeping those. I think I shouldn't say I don't mind. I don't think I'll mind keeping those at the end of each week. And then I will index them the same. Does that make sense? A lot of notes I just take on my daily pages. If they're just, you know, one little blurb, like here or here, I don't need a whole spread for that. I'm going to create a spread for it as these start to pile up. Okay, but I don't need to create it yet. I don't feel, personally, I don't feel the need for it. Um, I might later on today, maybe, just because I think these are gonna be two different videos. So, I'm not sure. I'm not going to commit to anything. We'll see how that goes. And then there's a bunch of blank pages. A bunch of blank pages that I'm completely in love with. And then toward the back, what I've done is kind of like collections. This is stuff I always have. Um, this is a drawing that Romani so kindly sent me because there's something about her that just draws me in. So I printed her out and she goes to every planner. I have my typical page flags from Semicolon and some page flags from Paperhouse Productions 
sticky notes are from Paper Panda and from Kinley's Doodles. And then I have stuff stuck back here like the Hobonichi Week stickers I'm using. Um, I stuck a adhesive pocket from Target on here just holding stamps, a uh, prescription, um, pictures from a different photo booth, scratch paper, that's also from Kinley's Doodles, post-its, postcard from France from my son. Uh, more planner Kate stickers that's all kind of back in there and then what I did was I started from the back and started working my way forward with the stuff that I pretty much always have in the back of my planner so the first spread from the back is medical bills I've paid in 2019 the next spread is kind of a running to-do list mostly house stuff the next spread is um, kind of private stuff but I just have it labeled miscellaneous the miscellaneous section, I treat that like a dashboard. I put stuff on post-its, I stick it in there. When it no longer applies, I just get rid of it. Um, this is all, I have it under lists, but this is all writing little things that have come to my brain really quickly. I have a couple of quotes and then empty post-its for more quotes. Those kind of apply to the writing stuff. And then a when did I last list. And I got this idea from one of the articles in um, Paper Planning Magazine. I, whoa, who wrote it? Oh my goodness, my brain, you guys, I'm so sorry. I will link directly to the article down below. But I liked the idea of a when did I last kind of spread. So I just use post-it notes on here. These sticky notes are from Kinley's Doodles. And when did I last change my contacts? You guys, it's every two weeks during allergy season sometimes I do it a little bit more because they're so gross <laughs> and uh, when we just got a brand new bed I have to rotate the mattress once a month for six months so that okay start keeping track of when I did it last when did I last completely dump the litter box I completely dumped the litter box once a month when did we last get the oil changed in both cars that kind of thing I always have a hard time going back and finding and I don't want to have to flip back through a ton of planner pages and find when I last did it. And I'm honestly not really good at just keeping this kind of stuff digitally. I mean, I could just keep it in Evernote, right? <laughs> It'd be so easy, but I'm horrible at updating it. In here, I know I'll be better about updating it. So that's why that is there. And I will link to that article because she wrote a great article about having a when did I last section in your planner. So when I change my contacts tomorrow morning and I'm super excited about it because the ones I'm wearing are gross, um, I'll just pull this off and put the proper date on there. And I know it's every two weeks. So. That is it. I feel like I spoke really quickly. I feel like my voice is really raspy because of this lovely cold. And we're gonna see how this evolves. This is by no means done. Um, that's something else that I've really, I'm mean, surprisingly for the way I know that I generally function, I'm really embracing the idea that this is ever evolving. So it doesn't have to be done. It doesn't have to be, okay, now it is set up, now I can use it. No, I'm gonna use it because it's here. I'm gonna use it because what I need right now is set up the way I need it. And if that changes, if I need that weekly spread to change, if I find I don't need a weekly spread anymore, fine, then I'll just get rid of it in the upcoming week, right? I'm really absolutely loving how freeing this is that I'm not worried about exactly how I have it set up. I have enough structure in it that I'm happy. Um, usually a big blank bound book like this would honestly, if I wasn't just gonna flat out longhand journal in it and that was it, this would freak me out to use it as a planner. I don't know what it is. I think it's a combination of reading the book for the second time, getting the perspectives of so many other people because it's One Book July who are also reading the book at the same time, Romani's videos because she and I share a brain, so she really truly explains things in a way that my brain can get like that. I don't know what it is, but I am so in love with this right now. So I will keep you guys updated. I will be showing you as the month goes along, if anything changes, any new collections, how I feel about keeping those notes at the end of each week. Um, please check out everybody's stuff down below. I will link to all of the tabby tabs and all the cool stuff you see here. Um, I will link to that stuff down below as well. And I feel like there was something else I was going to say and now I can't remember it. So guess what? It couldn't have been that important. <laughs> I hope One Book July is treating you all well. I hope you're learning a lot. I, again, I know I've said it a thousand times, but I could not be happier that we are doing Bullet Journal Method this year. So show me, tell us, tag everything, One Book July 2019, so we can see what you're learning, what's working for you, what's not working for you, what you're up to. I would love to see. Thank you all so much. I will talk to you soon.